Hi guys, it's Sophie and tonight I'll be reading you Alice in Wonderland which is one of my favourite childhood books and still is now to be honest. Um, I think this book's quite unusual looking um, in the fact that I haven't seen a cover quite like this one um, but my family have been buying them for me like of my birthday buying different versions so I can see all the different ones because I just love them so much. Okay, I'll we'll start right at the beginning of Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Here we go, let's have a look. Down the rabbit hole. Not as good as the original illustrations, I have to say, in my opinion, but still pretty good. Okay. Down the rabbit hole. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book of her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what use is what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversations? So she was considering in her own mind, as well as she could, for the hot day made her feel very sleepy and stupid, whether the pleasure of making a daisy chain would be worth the trouble of getting up and picking the daisies, when suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by. There was nothing so very remarkable in that, nor did Alice think it so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be too late. When she thought it over afterwards, it occurred to her that she ought to have wondered at this, but at the time it all seemed quite natural. But when the rabbit looked, when the rabbit actually took a watch out of his waistcoat pocket and looked at it, and then hurried on, Alice started to her feet, for it flashed across her mind that she had never before seen a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a watch to take out of it. And burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it. And unfortunately, it was just in time to see it pop down a large rather hole under the hedge. In another moment, down Alice went after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out again. The rabbit hole went straight on like a tunnel for some way and then dipped down suddenly, so suddenly that Alice had not a moment to think about stopping herself before she found herself falling down a very deep well. Either the well was very deep or she fell very slowly for she had plenty of time as she went down to look about her and to wonder what was going to happen next. First she tried to look down and make out what she was coming to but it was too dark to see anything. When she looked at the sides of the well and noticed that they were filled with cupboards and bookshelves, here and there she saw maps and pictures hung upon pegs. She took down a jar from one of the shelves as she passed. It was labelled orange marmalade, but to her great disappointment it was empty. She did not like to drop the jar for fear of killing someone, so managed to put it onto one of the cupboards as she fell past it. Well, thought Alice to herself, after such a fall as this, I should think of nothing tumbling down the stairs. How brave they'll think of me at home. Why, I wouldn't say anything about it, even if I fell off the top of the house, which is very likely true. Down, down, down. Would the fall never have come to an end? I wonder how many times I've fallen this time. She said aloud. I must be getting somewhere near the centre of the earth. Let me see. That would be 4,000 miles down, I think. For you see, Alice had learnt several things of this sort in her lessons in the schoolroom, and as this was not a very good opportunity for showing off her knowledge, as there was no one to listen to her, but it was still good practice to say it over. Yes, that's about the right distance, but then I wonder what latitude or longitude I've got to. Alice had no idea what latitude was, or longitude either, but they thought there were grand words to say. Presently she began again. I wonder if I should fall right through this at the earth. How funny it'll seem to come out among the people that walk on their heads downwards. The antipathies, I think. She was rather glad no one was listening this time, as it didn't sound at all right, the word. But I shall have to ask them what name of the country is, you know. Please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or Australia? And she tried to curtsy as she was spoke. Fancy curtsying as you're falling through the air. Do you think you could manage it? And... What an ignorant little girl she'll think of me. No, it'll never do to ask. Perhaps I shall see it written up somewhere. Down, down, down. There was nothing else to do, so Alice soon began talking again. Dinah will miss me. Very, very much. 
tonight, I should think. Dinah was the cat. I hope they remember her saucer of milk at tea time. Dinah, my dear, I wish you were down here with me. There are no mice in the air, I'm afraid, but you could catch a bat or... And that's very like a mouse, you know. But do cats eat bats, I wonder? And here Alice began to get rather sleepy and went on saying to herself in a dreamy sort of way, Do cats eat bats? Do cats eat bats? And sometimes... Do bats eat cats? For you see, as she couldn't answer either question, it didn't much matter which way she put it. She felt that she was dozing off and had just begun to dream that she was walking hand in hand with Dinah and saying to her very earnestly, Now, Dinah, tell me the truth. Did you ever eat a bat? When suddenly, thump, thump, down she came upon a heap of dry leaves and the fall was over. Alice was not hurt and she jumped up onto her feet in a moment. She looked up, but it was all dark overhead. But her her was another long passage and the white rabbit was still in sight, hurrying down it. There was not a moment to be lost. Away went Alice like the wind, and it was just in time to hear her say, as it turned another corner, Oh, my ears and whiskers, how late it's getting. She was close behind it when she turned the corner, but the rabbit was no longer to be seen. She found herself in a long, low hall, which was lit by a row of lamps hanging on from the roof. There were all the doors of the hall. There were doors all round the hall, but they were all locked, and when Alice had been all the way round, all the way down one side and up the other, trying every door. She walked sadly down the middle, wondering how she was ever going to get out again. Suddenly she came upon a three-legged table, all made of solid glass. There was nothing on it except a tiny golden key. And Alice's first thought was that it might belong to one of the doors of the hall. But alas, either the locks were too large or the key was too small, but at any rate it would not open any of them. However, the second time round she came upon a low curtain that she had not noticed before and behind it was a little door, about fifteen inches high. When the, she tried the little golden key in the lock, and to her great delight it fitted. Alice opened the door and found that it led into a small passage, not much larger than a rat hole. She knelt down, looked along the passage, onto the loveliest garden you had ever saw. How she longed to get out of the dark hall and wander among those beds of bright flowers and those cool fountains. But she could not even get her head through the doorway. And even if my head would go through, poor, thought poor Alice, it would be all very little use without my shoulders. Oh, how I wish I could shut up like a telescope. I think I could, if only I knew how to begin. For you see, so many of the out-of-the-way things had happened lately that Alice had begun to think that very few things indeed were really impossible. There seemed to be no use in waiting by the little door, so she went back to the table, half hoping that she might find another key on it, or at any rate a book of rules for shutting people up like telescopes. This time she found a little bottle on it, which certainly was not there before, said Alice, and round its neck a paper label with the words, Drink Me, beautifully printed in large letters. It was all very well to say, Drink Me, but the f wise little Alice was not going to do that in a hurry. No, I'll look first, she said and see whether it's marked poison or not, for she had read several nice little histories about children who had got burnt and eaten up by wild beasts and many other unpleasant things, all because they would not remember the simple rules of their friends that their friends had taught them, such as, if a, rot ho if a hot bo that, a red hot poker will burn you if you hold it too long, and that if you cut your finger very deeply with a knife, it usually bleeds. And she had never forgotten that if you drink from such a bottle marked poison, it is almost certain to disagree with you sooner or later. However, this bottle was not marked poison, so Alice ventured to taste it, finding it very nice. It had, in fact, a sort of mixed flavour of cherry tart, custard, pine, apple, roast turkey, toffee and a hot buttered toast. She very soon finished it off. What a curious feeling, Alice said. I must be shutting up like a telescope. And so it was indeed. She was now only ten inches high, and her face brightened up at the thought that she had now be the size of going through the door, little door, into that lovely garden. First, however, she waited for a few minutes to see if she was going to shrink any further. She felt a little nervous about this. For it might end, you know, said Alice, in my going out altogether like a candle. I wonder what I would be like then, and she tried to fancy that what the flame of a candle is like after it is blown out, for she could not remember ever having seen such a thing. After a while, finding that nothing more happened, she decided to go on with the garden at once. But alas, poor Alice, when she got to the door she found that she had forgotten the little golden key, and went back to the table for it. 
She found she could not possibly reach it. She could see it quite plainly through the glass, and she tried her best to climb up one of the legs, but it was too slippery. And when she had tried herself out, tired herself out, the poor little thing sat down and cried. Come, there's no use in crying like that, Alice said to herself very sharply. I advise you to leave this minute. She generally gave herself very good advice, though she very seldom followed it, and sometimes she told herself so severely it would bring tears into her eyes. And once she remembered trying to box her own ears in for having cheated herself in a game of croquet when she was playing against herself. For this curious child was very fond of pretending to be two people. But it's no use, thought poor Alice, to pretend to be two people. Why, there's hardly enough of me left to make one respectable person. Soon her eye fell on a small glass box that was lying under the table. She opened it and found in it a very small cake which on which the words, eat me, were beautifully marked in currants. Well, I'll eat it, said Alice, and if it makes me larger, I can reach the key. And if it makes me smaller, I can creep under the door. So either way, I'll get into the garden, and I don't care which happens. She ate a little bit, and said anxiously to herself, which way, which way, holding her hand on top of her head to feel which way it was growing. And she was quite surprised to find that she remained the same size. To be sure... This generally happens when one eats cake, but Alice had got so much into the way of expecting nothing but out-of-the-way things to happen that it seemed quite dull and stupid for life to go on in the common way. So she set to work and very soon finished off the cake. Okay, that's the end of chapter one. And I'll uh, be reading another chapter soon. So good night and pleasant dreams.